By the end of this video, you're going to be filling out your field level hazard assessments like a pro. Good morning everybody, my name is Chris Conkle and my channel is all about helping you grow into quality tradespeople so that you can gain the confidence to concentrate on your tasks. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to fill out a field level hazard assessment. You would be surprised how many people actually do not know how to do this properly. Um, by the end of this video you will be a pro at filling out those field level hazard assessments and doing them properly so that you can train and help other people as well. I was doing hazard assessments for many years without doing them properly. I actually didn't know under, understand how to properly fill out a field level hazard assessment until I became an NCSO, which is a National Construction Safety Officer. That's terribly sad if you ask me. I worked for so many companies under so many different journey person and foreman, uh, and not a single one of them had taught me how to properly fill one out. It's important to understand that if there's any kind of accident in the field, the first thing the safety advisor or the OHS is going to want to see is your field level hazard assessment. So it's very important that you fill that out properly because if you don't fill that out properly then there's liability issues. Now don't get me wrong, your foreman should have inspected your uh, your field level hazard assessments in the beginning so you should be filling them out properly. But just in case you're not, this video is going to be very good for you. Even for experienced workers who've been doing them for years, you wouldn't believe how many people don't fill these out properly. A lot of guys are just lazy and they fill out one line and one hazard just to get it over with, but that's not acceptable. And management should not be allowing this to happen. So today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to fill out your field level hazard assessment so that you are aces when it comes to an investigation or an inspection. Any type of uh, and any type of safety officer in the field is going to ask you for your field level hazard assessment, and they're going to want to read that and make sure you filled it out correctly. Uh, if you haven't, they're just going to make you fill it out again until you actually have it done right. Uh, a lot of the times, you're just show, you're just given a piece of paper and told to fill it out, and you have no idea how to do it. So trust me, I I was there. I've been there. I I don't know how many times I was given a. a a document to fill out and I had no idea how to do it you just go ahead and you fill it out any way you think is correct the first thing that you need to know before filling out your field level hazard assessment is the safe job procedure for your task if you're a skilled worker and you've done this task many times then you already know the steps but say you're a new worker and you don't know what the steps are uh, even something as simple as the safe job procedure I'm about to show you uh, just lifting a, something that is you know uh, a, a normal sized lift just as a you know you're moving material uh, you're cleaning you're lifting heavy bags whatever okay so this uh, this safe job procedure is for uh, <clears throat> lifting a heavy object small size okay so uh, you can see that a safe job procedure is made from uh, a safe job procedure is made from what's called a job hazard analysis and what a, that uh, what that what a job hazard analysis is the steps of uh, for each task with the hazards and controls for for those uh, for that task okay so this safe job procedure right here it's uh, for heavy lifting, manual lifting, just a normal size thing. It could be uh, like scrap drywall, it could be scrap wood, it, just, it could be anything. Small boxes or medium sized to large boxes. Something that's not overly heavy that you don't have to uh, you know, need help. But you might need help. Uh, that's something that, that's another hazard and a control we're going to talk about. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to start off with, uh, you have to read the uh, safe job procedure and uh, all the steps that are in your safe job procedure, um, you got to transfer them over to your field level hazard assessment form. Okay, so that is a field level hazard assessment form and uh, you can see at the top uh, there's room for your, your name, your job number, your muster point, uh, all those things that you must know uh, for every job that you're on. All right, and uh, the top column there is a checklist of just a reminder to make sure that you check for all of these things and check off all of the things that you find in your environment that uh, will affect your task, okay? Uh, down below, you'll see the, the column for tasks. Uh, that is for one task, okay? So you need to break down your task into steps, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. But And then you can see everyone signs off. Alright, so it's very important to understand this. So many people don't know how to do this. It's uh, it's very, very dangerous. 
So we're gonna change that. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you exactly how to fill it out. Okay, so the first step, the first step you're gonna do, the first step that you're gonna do is check off, okay, the, the first step that you're gonna do after you've filled out the top of information with the job number and your name and the muster point and date it, is uh, you're gonna go through that checklist and check off everything that is uh, hazard in your environment. Uh, if you can especially look under personal limitations, if you do, if you actually check off any of these personal limitations, uh, like especially the top one there, if there's no uh, procedure available for that task, then you must complete a JHA, which is a job hazard analysis, which will then be translated into um, a safe job procedure. Okay, so you can see right there if you actually check off any of those ta any of those tasks or any of those uh, dangerous hazards, then don't do the task until that is corrected first. All right. Uh, so then, what you're going to do next is you write down the ta the steps of your task first. Okay, just write down all your steps first. All right, so column one, and I like to number mine, as you can see right there. Okay, so once you've once you've um, uh, once you've written down all the steps of your task, skip over the severity rating and go right to your hazards. All right, so once you've written down all of the hazards for for each step, then you go on to the controls, and uh, you write down your controls. So it is a, a process of uh, each column go column by column by column uh, then at the very end you rate it for severity okay one being low risk three being high risk um, just simple as that it's very very simple all you guys have to do is read the safe job procedure and the safe work practice and translate that into a field level hazard assessment uh, without having the proper safe job procedures you're, you're not going to be able to to properly fill out your hazard assessment so make sure that if there is no procedure available for the task that you're doing then do a formal job hazard analysis so then you can formulate a safe job procedure all right so your your safety advisors should be on this your your general your foreman everything everyone your management should be on this and remember if you're a new worker and this is your first field level hazard assessment then make sure that your foreman somebody from management actually reviews it first before you uh, you go on and, and 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 do any any work okay because uh, somebody in management needs to deem you competent on your task before you can do it so make sure that there's somebody there training you how to do this properly okay and that you have the safe uh, the safety manual available and um, so that you can go through the safe job procedures for your each t for each of your new tasks okay uh, something very very important to remember is uh, after each break and uh, and as your environment changes, you must update this uh, field level hazard assessment with the changes and conditions or the change in a task. So for each new task, you need to do a new field level hazard assessment. Okay, so this is regulated by the OH&S Code Act and Regulations, which is the blue book. <coughs> the blue book. I actually have the blue book out because I'm going to show you something just real quick. This is the OH&S blue book. Okay, so this also should be on your job site. Okay, you have to have this. Um, something I wanted to show you in the uh, in chapter uh, two of the uh, uh, this is the act. Yeah, sorry. So in chapter two of the act, it outlines the worker and management responsibilities. So if you haven't reviewed the obligation of employers, workers, etc., then make sure you review that. Uh, right away before you uh, do any uh, type of field level hazard assessment okay you need to read this section first you can see how it goes down and, it, and then it explains also to also what a prime contractor is so I'll be going into more detail with the health and safety manual as we go on um, but for now it's uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that make sure that you've read the worker responsibilities and uh, and the management worker or management make sure you've read the management worker responsibilities i want to make sure that you guys are safe and you make it home every day to that beautiful family of yours it's very really important that we know how to properly fill out our field level hazard assessments all of these forms are available on my website for download and they're absolutely free so take advantage of that 
and I'm putting up new forms and new documents, new templates every week. I'm putting up new stuff, so make sure you're always checking in and, and uh, downloading whatever you need. Uh, what it, uh, I really want to do is start to develop these forms a little bit more. So if you're into safety or if you want to get involved, then uh, start sending me back the forms with your changes you can my email address is available through my website uh, you can get it there you can leave me a comment uh, down below and we can start get the ball rolling um, but I, what I really would like to do is to start a community for free safety documentation and uh, we can just all update it together and improve it right we'll make it better uh, my goal is obviously to make it safer tomorrow uh, I, we definitely have a decline in interest for people wanting to work in the trades so um, the more that we can generate and work together the you know the better that uh, I think our future is going to be a field level hazard assessment is regulated by the OHNS code act and regulations it is the law to have to do it every single day you must Update it as your tasks change. You must update it as your environmental hazards change. And um, make sure you, after every single break, you come back, you're doing your checks. You're doing that last minute risk assessment and you're uh, adjusting your FLHA if, if needed. Uh, you, it's, it's crazy how many people do not know how to properly do this. It's, uh, it is insane, actually. Um, when I was a foreman and a safety officer, it, was, it just blew my mind how I would get a stack of uh, FLHAs every single week. And I, not, I don't think it was so rare to get one that was actually filled out properly. Maybe one in a hundred or, or more even will, of, will be filled out correctly. So it's very important to uh, watch this video so that you understand exactly what needs to go into that field level hazard assessment. Remember, it's just to protect you. This is your hazard assessment. This is to protect yourself. So it's very important. Don't don't slough it off. Have you ever been asked to do a hazard assessment, a field level hazard assessment, a hazard assessment of any kind, but ha but haven't been trained properly on how to do it? Then uh, let us know down below in the comments. We'd like to hear from you, your experiences. If you want to learn how to start your career in construction, prepare for that first day, and know what to expect on your first day on a site, then make sure you watch these videos. This is Chris. Bye for now, guys.